Hi, you're watching Shipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our platforms. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman is... I'm Eric Zandona in Vancouver, Washington. Eric and I have been falling all over ourselves. Wait till you see this packaging. This, this is Miel de Tierra Mezcal. Look at, look at the packaging on this thing. Yeah, this it's super is, cool. This is so cool. We got like a honeycomb pattern on the top. It was great wood box. Yes. Uh, would you say this is a similar? Well, no, it's probably balsa wood, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's very well constructed. Uh, whoever's making these for them is Lightweight. doing a hell of a job. Yeah. Um, it's got some great uh, designs on the side. You, you really, we have nominated it for Brand of Promise in the, in the packaging, but this mm -hmm. is the star of that show, man. This, this Añejo yeah. packaging, it's got... Um, you know, nice, nice designs. It is, it is a, a, a pentagon. No, it's a hexagon. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who are geometrically, <laughs> 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 who are geometrically inclined, yes. uh, it, it is really lovely, very lovely. And it says here, this is their slogan: "Suave como la miel, viejo como la tierra," which means it's it's smooth like like honey, but old uh, as. As, as old as the as the ground as, as the earth yeah so and and it really is a testament to to the 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 plants that they're using we've been through the salmiana joven mm -hmm. we've been through the uh uh espadin joven uh, this one look at this look at the color on this thing this is a um an añejo now eric tell people what's so special about this one so the really interesting thing about this Añejo Mezcal is made in the state of Zacatecas from Blue Weber Agave. Now, um, I have had, uh, I told Eric off camera, I have had last year uh, on our Branch of Promise, we had a Blue Agave uh, uh, Zacatecas Mezcal, but at a higher ABV. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is still, this is an Añejo, uh, and it's still 80 proof. 40 ABV, okay. Um, but now what what did they say how long these are aged? So they're saying that they're aging these uh, between two and five years. So mezcal doesn't have an extra and añejo category mm -hmm. in terms of a legal definition. So this would fall into the sort of extra añejo sort of tequila sort of in that sort of range uh for some of it but um but uh because of the way the rules are written in mezcal this is just an añejo okay now um the information i'm looking at also says the 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 plant is is blue weber mm -hmm. okay it is a 10 year aged um and they are, the the barrels are using a virgin white oak yeah. so they are not using whiskey uh, yeah, ex bourbon barrels or whatever. Yeah. Now, would you say the the, the wording on this is a, a, a bit nebulous to me or mm -hmm. ambiguous because it says two to five years. Could it be, Eric, that this is a blend? Yeah, that's that's my assumption is that they have different barrels of different ages that they're blending together for some sort of target profile. Okay, so this would be a blend and so technically even like tequila if they're if they're blended like like that you know from from anywhere over 3 years and up it would still unless they unless they use the oldest barrel that that, that was there so anything right. over 3 years is a considered a, a an extra new right um let's let's try this thing i i would love to know what the nose is like i'm going to use my glencairn by the way i'm going to yeah. i'm going to break down and use the glencairn this is virgin white oak, ladies and gentlemen. Not whiskey, not bourbon. Virgin white oak. Nothing else touches this. This. Uh, this. Uh, they, the wording. The, whoever did the translation, call these caskets. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But they're not. They're. They're not. You know. Okay. They didn't house a dead body or anything like that. Um, these are casks. Great golden color. Really dark and rich. It, it's the color of honey. It's an amber. It's a honey color. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. 
good choice on that color, man. I, I really, I, I, they're really sticking to that theme, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you haven't, if you haven't been sticking with us, uh, just so you know, the the uh, company Miel de Tierra it donates a portion of their proceeds for uh, saving the bees. Yeah. It's it's lovely. It's lovely. Yeah. Now the the legs and tears I'm getting are not clingy. They're 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 runny, mm -hmm. uh, which leads me to believe that there's not a, there there isn't. It, it, they've made it known very upfront that they are there's no additives in any of right. their any of their uh, mezcals. So what you so what you see is what you get. Right. Yeah. You know what, 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 I'm a little disappointed. This was all that we were able to get from, from Price Imports, but I would love to have tried before we go into the, into the, uh, mm -hmm. the ejo of, of the Blue Agave. I'd love to have tried the Joven myself. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I know that mm -hmm. I, I would love to see what the baseline is before I, yeah. I see what, what the wood does for it. Right. Yeah. Right now I'm getting some really pretty sweet notes. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of oak character coming through on the nose. It's like sweet caram, like caramel, light, light caramel. Some woodiness. Light kind of spiciness from the wood. Yeah. You know, there's there's no. Um, it's really unusual to be able to smell an añejo like this, that hasn't been um, uh, influenced by what was in it before. Right. You know, so we're not the spiciness. It's not you know the 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 recharring isn't a factor. The 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 characteristics of the whiskey or the bourbon are not a factor. This right. is just just agave. And now the process of this agave is different also, correct? Right. So this this is, they're using, uh, I would say, more of a, a similar approach to that you would find in tequila. So they're using an autoclave for cooking the piñas. Um, they're fermenting in stainless steel, but then they're distilling in copper, using copper. So... I almost got a little bit of licorice down at the bottom, just just mm -hmm. like, a, like yeah. I, maybe it's anise, but it smells more like licorice to me. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of like black licorice. Yeah, yeah, a very similar yeah. to what we tried with Santa Cuviso. If you if you right. all remember that one, that yeah. that was that was Bacanora. Holy cow! Yeah. All right, I'm ready to drink. Mm. <clears throat> this one's is I think you're right it's, it's a little bit hard to really evaluate this in the same way we have with other lines and that we haven't tasted the Hoven because I would say just off the bat my initial impression is this is a really nice balance Swedish you know uh, light wood character and Yeho Moscow and at the same time like maybe because it's the blue Weber maybe because it's cooked in a tr in an autoclave versus uh, a brick oven or a conical oven like I am I sort of feel like the agave character is a little bit lost thank you I didn't, I, I wanted, you know, a lot of times, I, even when we do sipping off the cuff, first of all, for those of you who've never seen our show or listened to our show, yeah. Eric and I and our other tasters and myself never really tell each other what we're thinking prior to going on the air. So we're literally sipping yeah. this stuff off the cuff. And Eric will tell you off camera, I, I broke the seal on three of these, not yeah. having had the time. Normally, I'll have time to... Uh, try these ahead of time and Eric does that just just for practice as well 
But yeah. I, neither one of us had discussed this. And a lot of times, you know, Eric, Eric's got such a, a strong background in, in all distilled spirits that, uh, and for me, technically, it's all been agave spirits. So I want to make sure that, that we're kind of both on the same page because maybe I'm tasting something different than he is. Mm -hmm. Because his, his spectrum on his palate is, is a lot wider than mine would. And only because I've only, you know, I'm spending all my time on agave spirits, everything, you know, whatever they are and have been for about 20 years. But yeah. I, I honestly, there's, there's, I, it's, uh, there, there's, there's, there's something lacking here for me Yeah. that, that I that I haven't had before in in mescals at eighty proof, mm -hmm. um, primarily as I said, if I were to have to compare this to uh, uh, a, uh, a scorpion mescal, right. which all their line is at eighty proof, most of all their line is at eighty proof. Right. Um, but again, Doug French uses French oak. He he does right. something completely different, but his his method is more um uh i want to say traditional than than this method is yeah uh, it's, as a matter of fact the agave that i had the blue agave mezcal that i had last year from Zacatecas was was traditionally in in a in a pit oven in a conical oven so uh -huh. i got characteristics that i don't normally get mm -hmm. in, a, in a tequila but there's there's something missing here for me I mean, the barrel is great. I'm glad that they use the the yeah the 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 virgin French oak or virgin oak. I'm sorry, virgin white oak. Yeah. But there's there's characteristics here that I I I, I really really want to try this. Now I want to try the the Hoven. Yeah. Right. Am I am I right? Yeah, for sure. Because it's a little bit hard because. You know, so they're, you know, they're not doing wild fermentation. They're using, you know, a standard uh, beer yeast, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, right. um, which is common in, in lots yeah, of... Beer, herbs. wine, and, and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think this is my impression, not having tasted the Hoven, that they are just producing a really clean base spirit that isn't that, that probably doesn't have a ton of agave character in the way a traditional mezcal would and so that is just being layered with wood in a good way so it's it, it has wood in all the right ways so okay. Okay. not it's not bitter it's not tannic it's not like you get good character from it you get good roundness on the mouth, but at the same time, like for me, uh, an añejo mezcal, you want that flavor to come through, and it's missing, isn't it? It's a, yeah, it's it's just not quite there. It's not quite there, and I, it, you know, is it just so? Let me ask you this. Yeah. Compared to tequilas. Right. What if I would imagine that this would if if the law demanded that tequila only be aged in virgin barrels of any kind. Right. This is probably what it would be like. Without the influence of the Jack Daniels and without the yeah. influence of bullet bourbon and you know, all those other all the other right. and whiskeys. Yeah, and I would say there are definitely añejo tequilas out on the market that have a similar character to this. Okay. My personal preference would always be to lean towards añejo tequilas that still retain some of that through line of the agave character. Mm -hmm. um, I've tasted plenty of añejo and extra añejos tequilas that taste nothing like agave they only taste like wood right and so you know this isn't that far out of that pack you know right it's right. just and that's why i say i think given how they're making it using an autoclave using stainless steel using uh you know a traditional sort of 
beer wine and spirit yeast. Um, they're producing a very clean spirit. They're probably also taking, I would guess, fairly narrow cuts mm -hmm. in terms of how they're distilling it so that it's really pure. Those are all good things, right? Right. You put that into a barrel and whatever maybe herbaceousness the Hoven had or whatever that might make that interesting, I think gets a little bit lost. Yeah, I do too. I agree. Um, I, I hesitate to nominate this one as a brand of promise only because the rest of the lines have been so good. But uh, would you agree with me then if we hold off on this and maybe in the future yeah. we tasted the the Hoven? Now, here's the, here's another suggestion. Not, not that anybody's listening to us at all. Last year, I don't know if you've ever had the chance to try the, the brand, the line called Onilicon. They're out of Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. It's a European version. They make a superb agave spirits and aguardientes from blue agave. Right. And they make a Mexican gin that I went bananas over. Uh, I myself have had... Rick Levy and myself went nuts over this. Yeah, I've never had them before, you know, and they yeah. were a little known brand, but they're using European techniques. So they're using that copper yeah. European column still. You can you can see them on, on online. They still have their own shop in Puerto Vallarta, but their stuff was stellar. So would you say this would probably be better if it was done as a Mexican gin? Well, I mean, so that, I mean, gin is like you're adding in botanicals and all oh, yeah, that. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If you're starting with but, a clean spirit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going if you're going that way, I mean, this. I mean, I think what they're producing has you know great potential for a lot of stuff. I just think in terms of the category of Inejo Mezcal. Um, you got to come stronger, man. Yeah, yeah. I think the the ABV and the, the character of the spirit is not where I think most people are going to be expecting it. Um, so that's, that's why I would reserve okay. calling a brand of promise nominee. Um, I Except think for the packaging, the packaging is stellar, yeah, the packaging's man. beautiful. Yeah, um, I think what this shows is like the distiller is doing a really good job at yes. making clean spirit. So, so there's there's definitely skill in what's happening. It's just I think there there's there's something missing. Yes, I agree. I agree. I didn't want to be the first one to say it, but I agree. Um, so that being said. This this is that was our take on now. Is it worth looking for? Yeah, I believe I believe so. Yeah. If you're an oak head, you know, and, right. and and you you know maybe you're even in the habit of of aging your own spirits because some guys like to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, and you want to support bees. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't forget this. This is really you know it's an important part of it's it's the important part of the overall message. That oh that's a, that's a good shot of the how did you get that lighting? That shot of, <laughs> Just that, right there it is yeah so you got some good lighting on the honeycomb, yeah. um, you know it's it's a big part of the overall message, um, yeah. and and I would like to see I would now that this particular distiller uh, is is a woman uh, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken is Doña Teresa Rubio Murillo, yeah she uh, her she's responsible for. A reposado mezcal that is made in Zacatecas and a yeah. joven mezcal also in Zacatecas, both of these from Blue Weber or Agave. I, yeah. I, like you, Eric, I would really, really like to taste it now in, in, in its joven state. Yeah. Because I, I think, uh, I think knowing what that baseline is would help us calculate what the repo and the añejo are trying to do. Right. Um, because yeah. Uh, according to the information that we had, you know, she's using the, uh, the non-traditional, more, uh, I guess you could call it traditional because it's you know, stainless steel vats. You know, it's not yeah. ancestral and it's not artisanal. So right. that's that's where she comes in. And yeah. I like where she's heading, though. OK, I want to be mm -hmm. I want to go on record saying I like where she's heading. I think that there's room for improvement um, and it's still worth looking for. It's still worth finding. Right. Yeah, and that, that's why I, I, 
I think that's the difference, right? Is there's nothing flawed about the spirit or the maturation, but it's just uh, you know, it, the, I think the choice of to put this mezcal, whatever the hoven was, into a barrel um, just sort of doesn't translate in the same way. Yeah. Now, maybe it's a little unfair because one thing that we haven't really talked about is that not all mezcal is what we know of mezcal from Oaxaca, right? Oaxaca has its own tradition of mezcal production. It's very possible that the tradition of mezcal production in Zacatecas is different in enough ways that we're expecting the wrong things. I don't know. Well, uh, I, you know, all I can say is from what my experience has been, yeah. I, uh, we did have one one brand from Zacatecas last year. I'm hoping to, to see more, you know, because you can make it a Zacatecas, Durango, uh, right. Oaxaca. Yeah, Oaxaca and Mezcal is, is, is the more popular line, but, you know, they're so concentrated there that people are beginning to branch out and see what the right. terroir is all about. And, right. and certainly, I still, Eric, like you, uh, you know, I, I want to res I reserve the right to change my mind, yeah. but I really would like to taste this in its Hoven state to see what what it, what it comes out of as in in the still. Because maybe maybe what it needs we don't know you know because she's the maker yeah. we we haven't I don't make anything I don't I don't make mezcal you know you don't make whiskey right. except maybe you maybe you make beer in your bathtub or something I don't yeah. know, but you know she's been doing it probably for a long time. So maybe if she got to play with the ABV, maybe it needs to be at a higher ABV in order right. for the character to come through in the virgin yeah. white oak barrel. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But but there's something missing, and I agree with you. I'm glad that we're both on the same page. But um, but yeah, it's still worth looking for because yeah. it, it, it's still a, a good example of what's available. And it's AB proof. Yeah. It's not going to hurt you. Yeah, no. And that's the thing, like, I think there's still plenty of people who would enjoy drinking a glass oh, yeah. of it. Yeah. It's really lovely, just yes. as it is, right? Yeah. The flavor of the wood, the caramels, the vanilla, from the wood, all of that really lovely stuff. So. Yeah, it's just, you know, Eric and I are kind of purists. And, you know, if, if I right. wanted aged vodka or whiskey or something like that, that, you know, that, that's what I'd be looking for. Uh, but that's our take. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, this is the, the Añejo version, mezcal, uh, made with blue agave. Uh, if you folks have had it before, don't forget, you know, if you've had it somewhere, if you, I, I understand it's available uh, here in Texas at Specs, uh, mm -hmm. which is a huge uh, line of, of, uh, of liquor stores and spirits, uh, uh, wine stores. Um, if you've had it, in the comments, let us know what you think. All yeah. Right? Because maybe Eric and I are completely off base, but... Uh, you know, that that's the beauty of agave spirits is that there's room for everybody. So, uh, but but that was our our version of Miel de Tierra Mezcal uh, uh, Añejo. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman out there is. I'm Eric Zandona in Vancouver, Washington. You have been watching and listening and sipping with us on Sipping Off the Cuff, uh, Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our platforms. Don't forget to subscribe. But whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Zip wisely.